the Mechalek up to my dad's place. We're going to put the mulcher head on it. I swung down to Global this morning, grabbed one of the adapter plates. See it sitting there. That thing weighs about 200 pounds. 220 to be exact. And she's heavy. And we got to plumb all that in today. But I got a little bit of time to kill. And the machine's right here. It's chaining it down. Top. I need to talk about some of these chain binders and some of the things I think that are awesome and some of the stuff that I think is just obsolete and shouldn't be used in situations like this you know snap binders ratchet binders different types of ratcheting binders we got ratchet straps different kinds of ratchet straps ratings some people get a little bit offended that you use a ratchet strap hauling equipment around sometimes ratchet straps are rated for more than chains are you know let's be realist here fiber there's a lot of them they're tough strong so we're going to go over some of these that i got here and talk about areas which I feel like they're really great to use them in, areas which you should use a different one in, and some of them that we should just get rid of. And at the end of it, I'm going to say which one I think is by far, hands down, the best, you know, chain binder and or ratchet strap binder. I got them all laid out, all the ones I own anyway. Let's talk about it. So I got these. They look like they're kind of chintzy ones, but those are actually quite a bit tougher of fibers than this one here. So this one's rated 5,000 pounds. These ones are kind of neat because they slip down into there. Work perfect. Slip it back out of there. You got to modify them to make that happen. And then the other side, it's a simple little hook that you can get in your stake pocket. I really kind of like these on the flatbed trailer. They work great, especially if you're on a rub rail, stake pockets. And again, they're rated 5,000 pounds. You get these ones here, that's like a Home Depot kind of addition. Around three, thirty-five hundred, maybe 4,000 pound rating on those things. What I like using these ones for, because they're quick, simple, easy, dirty, is we're tying down the booms and stuff like that, because to be legal, if it's a turret machine or articulate machine, you gotta be able to have something to stop it from going side to side. And something like that is simple enough and will get the job done. But again, people kind of frown upon that and, you know, location of it. But this thing, let me show you what I actually do with it. Nice, simple, dirty. This one's got a hook. Put it right there in the stake pocket. Now, oddly enough, a little bit of controversy people bring to the table whenever show tying stuff down is you can't have it on the outside. That puts you at over width. You need an over wide sign or something. Word on the street is if it's your binders, you're exempt from the slight over 102. Take this guy here, give her a couple pumps. Slide your excess underneath there. Done. That's all that needs to keep it legit. That's it. That's it. out of the way next one same exact thing same ballpark rating same ratchet and everything but it's got these little chains on the end of it and no i'm not using this for tying down a big piece of equipment that weighs you know 20 plus thousand pounds i take one of these situations when you're hauling vehicles wrapping it around a hard part you can chain it back to itself nice and easy super simple same thing on this end drop it down in there 
this is definitely the preferred method of hooking one of these because gravity's holding the chain. So if something breaks here, the chain's still kind of, you know, kind of hanging on. Give her a couple snugs, and this one's done good to go. That way, you're not looping a ratchet strap around a sharp edge right like that that will tear it. That's one good perk of these ones right there. And for hauling equipment, such as Kubota wheel tractor, there's various little tie downs on that thing over the tire. You can tie that thing down like a car. Those things don't weigh too much. You can get away with any of these ratchet straps. Quick, simple, easy. You don't need to have, realistically, the heavy duty stuff up here. Now give me a 200 pound, big old heavy device, get it situated. Tie down, tuck it over there. These ones with the little spring hooks on it are kind of nice because they'll hold onto the side just a little bit, but if not, you always give a little tension. Learned this one a couple years ago. Kind of one of those tricks that went viral, but then people kind of forgot about. Wind it up. By far the best way to deal with these. Some people tie it all up, get a zip tie, get some wire tape. Got the nice roll up like that. Take the pigtail, stab it through there, pull around, choker it. Like I said, this stuff's a little bit tougher material. But then you can just kind of wrap it like this, tuck it underneath, she's good to go. Now let's go ahead and talk about the chain binders. You got your conventional, old school, leverage mechanical snap binder. See how this device works here? Pull her down and... Breaking point, come on baby, come on. Snaps. Or if you're not good and slip, and there goes your teeth. I knew a guy. That's all he used for hauling his equipment. And true story, I kid you not, cheater bar popped off there. He woke up, whoever knows how long, and he didn't know what happened. Figured that got knocked out somehow, didn't know how long he was laying there. So he went ahead, chained down his load, went on with his day, delivered it to the place. And he got there and realized his face was all busted up. And... Um, he didn't know how to do math anymore. I'm not kidding you. He forgot how to do math for a couple weeks. That is a true, honest to God story, snap binder incident. So, yeah, those things, eh, hit or miss. Now, I'm going to talk about this one, talk about that one, come back to this one, back and forth on these for a second. These are probably one of the best, more convenient routes to go. Guaranteed tightness. Pull probably harder. Easier leverage and everything. A ratcheting chain binder. You just hit this little guy and you can back it off. You don't need anything extra. This is just you, power, and that. Adjustable, works great. This here is something of the modern-ish age. If you're familiar with bigger trucks and stuff, your brake adjuster, your slack adjuster, that's pretty much what that bad boy is in there. Except for somebody retrofitted this thing and you take a drill gun to it now. And wow, that's all you need. But people might be like, well, you got to pack a drill gun around and stuff like that. That thing is very convenient. But we'll go back to this one. This is what I ran for a couple years before I was uh, introduced to these speed binders. Check this out. You notice I got an extra gear right there? What is that for? Let me show you here quick. Take my socket off that one. We got another socket here somewhere. What'd I do with the old girl? Uh oh there she is uh, oddly enough after four or five years i still remember they were three quarters this was an early stage one oh see dangerous and shit though i didn't run them that often in that situation let's see here come on baby That is very quick. 
probably put that in first gear. What do you think? That's pretty neat, isn't it? You never thought those did that, did you? <laughs> now they do make other variations that are standard like this, such as the ones that got a handle that's on a hinge so it gets out of the way. I actually really like those ones. But, you know, these ones are what I had, and this was what I ran for a while. So let's go ahead and try each one of these out right here. Hook this D-ring down to the trailer. Now, folks that tell you, well, you got to have a chain hooked on the machine, hooked on the trailer, and then, you know, do something like this magic thing, kind of a lot of stuff going on. Put a binder between the two. Big old chain wrapped around it. What a waste of flat out energy, man. You get these little shorties. These things are so time savers. I got your conventional, so if you want to hook to, let's say, steel track, or you run those bad boys, just like that's literally a hook that you use on, you know, the trailer tongues, so your safety chains. You get grade 70, get the big dog, get the big chain, whatever's necessary for your load. Hook it on the D ring. Those things are still holding on, no problem. And we'll go ahead and try some of these binders. Now, going back on my words, what I said just a second ago, these can actually be helpful to have a different tie in point down there. Your chain link variations, your location, and stuff like that. These things are just a, a prayer. You know, you can't really, you know, that. You put a, a cheater pipe on this thing, you might get that to go. But. At the end of the day, you're restricted to going for the next one and then she's floppy. You go over here, do that mess. Look at here, you got a little bit different. That was lucky. That was actually in a spot that that worked, but it took quite a bit of my energy. And if you're doing this day in and day out, multiple trips a day, you don't want to be doing that so I think these are pretty much a thing of the past except for on logging trucks why on logging trucks because you go to chain down your load you throw a binder strap over the whole top of the load and that binder or the chain will actually dig in with the tension of it and you'll have to go down the road the load will shift and you'll have to readdress it but you can actually pump on these a little bit if the one's too far away on this, there's no way you really can get it unless you just bend something. But with wood, it's forgiving and it'll fall into it. So one of these actually works pretty dang well for a logging truck. This is actually where it came from. This is off the logging truck, it fell off or something, got left at a job site and I picked it up. Let's go ahead and try these bad boys. I like to hook it right there on the edge. Hook it up there on the chain. Wrong way. Now this one or any other ratcheting chain binder, you can hear how the machine is actually creaking along with the trailer as that thing gets tighter. I could definitely put some more on it, but that's pretty dang tight. You tighten the front one, it's going to be even tighter. Physics. That is definitely, I would say, the best route to go as far as dependability if you're responsible for your own health. You know, if you show up, that's going to be there every day. They do make a couple other add-ons for it for running the drill gun. But man, you're talking about having more stuff to go wrong. You know, they make some clip-on things for those other standard ratcheting tie-downs. I just don't know about those. A lot of people were sending me those when they first popped up. I'd just rather stick with these if I was going to run them. But I'm going to show you the one that I think is truly revolutionized how I like to do my towing. Because this isn't bad. It gives you a little bit of a workout. It gets your heart beat up. If you've been sitting in the truck for a while, there's nothing wrong with this.
Go back to my 14 millimeter. Take that little guy off there. I keep this drill gun in the trailer for the last, shoot this trailer is a 2000, I got it in 2019. This drill gun's been with this trailer ever since. And same, everything here, except for the battery. It's changed about once every two weeks or so. Some days I'll haul no machines, you know, or some weeks I won't haul anything. But then some days I'll haul three, four rounds. And you know, you just gotta keep an eye on the little backup battery button right there to make sure she's charged. I take this guy, hook it on the back pocket. These speed binders, I think it was Captain Cleman that turned speed binders onto my channel. So thank you, Captain. I believe that's, he said something about that back in the day. I, not, don't quote me, but Captain, if I gave you, you know, appreciation, either way, cool guy. But these things are slick. And I was a little skeptical at first, but I got a set and, man, watch this here. I know these things have been popping up all over. Like realistically, I like stuff that's gonna benefit me in real life. And if I can show it on the channel, so that helps that company out and makes their business better, all the better. But before trying to get publicity and extra stuff, you know, saying, oh, I got the best stuff there is, let's make video on it. I wanna have the best stuff there is just so I can, you know, have a functional life and everything move nice and smooth. So watch this, put her in second gear and I use the drill gun. Nope, that's not it. First gear. Starts creaking. Get that out of the way so you can see how tight that is. Super, super simple. Now, like what I said a second ago about those other ones, you can run the drill gun on them. They do make additional tooling to go on your conventional ratchet tie down so you can run a drill gun but that's extra stuff going involved or if you're just a cat that doesn't want to bring any electronics involved and just want to do the mechanical way there's nothing wrong with that this one you have to have a little bit extra responsibility make sure you got a extra battery charge in your rig if you're running hot shot local you know kind of runs but for me you know every morning to come out check the batteries on the trailer check this check that your pre-trip and everything see if you got a battery that's charged i've used this one probably Oh, I don't know probably a dozen or more rounds with it and I still got three-quarter battery and this thing She's tight tight ain't going nowhere so I got the speed binders on this trailer and the little buddy and then I run the ratchet tie downs on the rest I'm going to have to grab another set of the speeds for the 40k which I'm going to be picking up this Sunday I'm going to try getting this video out before that trailer shows up but you guys know what I'm on about here. I ran these for a while. You can consider those a modified conventional ratchet binder. These ones, they just, no. Logging truck, that's the only place I see purpose for those. Uh, some guys say that they're a lot faster with those. Uh, some guys say they're faster with these. I would put money on that I could, you know, do it just as fast with that. I don't see why you wouldn't. You know, you gotta have a drill gun and stuff, but who doesn't have a drill gun anymore? Those things are, cheaper than a chain binder i think across the board uh those things are slightly more expensive than the rest but i think you're getting a better bang for your buck and above all that thing is way safer than that thing these you'd be pretty hard pressed to get hurt by one of those but at the end of the day i'm gonna vote for the speed binders nice simple no way around it uh so i'm gonna go ahead and strap down a couple more things just to show you well, I roll with it. Let's see. I got one more tie down and a side by right here. I had to do a little collection. Uh, I like these little white ones. They don't work good for anything else besides this kind of a trailer. Yep. Oh, over. I do want to point out that I've been using those speed binders and that drill gun for the last four years. Those things have been with this trailer since it was brand new when I got it in 2019 and they have not had any issues whatsoever. They've worked great this whole time. They actually got a little grease lurk on it so you can lube them up. If they sit out in the weather for a little while, I usually do the standard, just spray a little bit of grease right in there, just a spray can kind, just to give her a little lubrication. Well, let's go over the load setup and how I got this tied down 
and the areas where I chose to use the webbing straps versus the chains or no chains. So going to this new plate back here, this shiny new plate, the thing was not cheap. I don't really want to throw a chain over it and or any other location. Like some people will take a chain and go from here and throw it over the grapple. And then you get the chain links digging into the grapple and it's end up looking like just all beat up. And I think it looks kind of unprofessional. I don't like to see <laughs> and over right here and dings up on your machine. I don't like that. So in areas that I can and it's fine to, I run a ratchet strap and the webbing across it. Same thing with right here. It ain't going to go nowhere. It's perfectly fine. But right here, one thing to note, this is a long shot, but I've seen it in videos where a guy will take a long chain, and if you do, you make sure the end of it's nice and secured and can't fall off of there. You know, I can't get another wrap over it. That's just where this one's going to ride. But if you got a long chain and it comes unwound, you got these spinning devices that are always rolling and spinning a pretty good RPM. Your chain goes down there and it gets caught in the center of that dual, it's just going to wind it up and tear the machine, tear the trailer, tear whatever. So that's one thing that's always scared me about running the longer chains. Just in case something came unplugged and it went down there and started tearing into stuff. you got to watch out for that. So that's another thing. Safety factor is one big factor you always worry about. But that right there, it's not going to go nowhere. It's doing the same effect if you had the chain going to both ends. I'm not going to go into a bunch of logistics on it. But just realistically, it's easy, functional and safer about you know not destroying everything and or spots that you don't need to run a uh, you know chain at all i like that and i've been running that way for since i got the mechalek it works out really good i did put that d-ring right there but it just didn't the math didn't quite work for load placement but it's there if i need it and this guy here nice simple over the top she ain't gonna go nowhere heavy duty strap that's i mean the strap's gonna be pulling just as hard as a dang chain so you know she's not going nowhere <sighs> anyway comment below what you guys' thoughts are on what binders you prefer chain location placement and all that kind of stuff uh fyi i did get critics in the comment section saying chain of the blade isn't actually chain into machine well via every little mini x there is that's the point given of tie down there is nothing else on this side besides going through this sprocket maybe there ain't you see anything up there way up there i don't even know how you get to it but it makes sense that's the way all minis are they say tie down in those spots right there i'm gonna end it here i gotta get this thing up to haas's house gotta grab some milwaukee batteries to keep dying and uh yeah we gotta see if we get this mulcher head on today hopefully by the end of tomorrow be realistic